Zachary is saying, get, get that, that fire exit door. door. I'm off. Off to the start of the scene. That's not a stretch, that's just genius in action. <laughs> Hi friends, I hope you're well. Welcome back to another video. Now, <laughs> if you are a regular here, you may know that I I like to use, memes is such a, a, like a gross word, but like I like to use some memes in my videos, you know? I like to edit in a bit of Gemma Collins. <laughs> Bit of Nikki from Big Brother. I just Get feel like jizz. a cooped up chicken. Bit of charity shop soon. Can you count me in? Three, two, one. Hey, you chatters. How are ya? Right, it's just the start editing I like. I like making fun of myself, and I feel like they're a cool way to do that. However, I did get a comment on a video last week telling me to stop using them and whilst it, it was it was a fairly respectful comment you know it wasn't I wouldn't call it a hate comment they were respectful in their opinion but I, I think they're wrong <laughs> and so I decided to just double down on that and make a video entirely about memes so what we're doing today is I got you guys to send in your favorite memes or funny videos or whatever pictures and I'm gonna be trying to match them to books match the energy of that meme to a book that I've read. I'm I'm not calling this book recommendations because I think that would be too hard to solely, rec you know, pick on books that are given four or five stars. If a book I've given one star matches the energy, we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna talk about why I didn't like it. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification to be notified of whenever I post because in the words of Luke from Hot Lamode, what, what do you have, you have to, to lose, lose your already here? here? Okay, so the first one is I didn't get no sleep cause of y'all Y'all not gonna get a sleep cause of me I'm gonna sleep cause of you I'm never gonna sleep cause of me Okay, right, let's have a think That's a that's a strong, that's a classic Like that is etched in history I've got my Goodreads open up in front of me So for this I tried to think of a book that I didn't get much sleep while reading. I thought that was the most appropriate thing to go with. And I have chosen The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. So this is actually the first book I did a reading vlog for my channel. And I just remember wanting to just stay up and read this book. It's also a bit spooky. So I feel like it fits maybe like you're scared so you can't sleep. Although it's not that scary. It's not horror. It's true. Love a bit of drama. We have a woman who has gone to this smart home to be a nanny there, a live-in nanny, and things quickly start going wrong. And it's told through a series of letters because she is writing to the man she wants to help her because she has been accused of murder of one of the children. And she's saying, yo, I didn't kill that kid. And it's basically the story of what happened. So I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I think it's the only thriller I've ever given five stars. And it was the first thriller I read as well. This is just the kind of book that you just want to fly through. And it's very quick to read as well. So I feel like it's the kind of book that you could very easily find yourself not sleeping and just reading this instead. Okay, we've got our first GC. Oh, I don't want to play any more games. I'm fucking gamed out. I've had enough of playing games. Have I got any books that could be seen as games? Have I read anything about games? Okay, hang on. This is gonna take me a moment. <laughs> games. Nope, 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 no, 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 in it, like as a big plot point. So I'm gonna say Bunny by Mona Award. Now, the vlog where I read this is coming out at the weekend on Sunday. So I don't wanna spoil the vlog. <laughs> so I'm not gonna tell you what I thought about this. I, I mean, other than, you know? But essentially in this, one of the plot points is that there are these bunnies who are these girls who, I, I don't wanna spoil anything, but they, they kind of end up being a cult and they have certain, they do a certain activity which I think they see as a game. When they talk about it or when they're doing the activity, I don't want to spoil anything, but it involves animals exploding. <laughs> they see that as a game. They kind of see it as something 
outside of the realms of reality. And when you read it, you're like, it almost doesn't feel real. It feels like a game. So that's why I've said bunny. Okay, I am breaking down. Please be quiet. What show is that from? I feel like I should know. Okay. So a book that made me cry. I mean, that's not that hard. For this, I want to recommend something I haven't spoken about in a long time. But I've been thinking about it. And I do actually want to speak about this book. And that is Love, Aubrey. I believe it's by Suzanne Lafleur. I read this in a Reading My Childhood Favourites books video. Which was kind of like a big video for me. Now, it's not like one of the most viewed videos on my channel. But I think in terms of like me figuring out what kind of content I wanted to make. It was a big, big video for me. I cried a lot in that video. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> books made me cry quite easily but this one i feel like was one i was the biggest mess for the reason i haven't spoken about it is because it is kind of old middle grade and so i just think people i always assume people won't be interested in it but i feel like i've seen a big resurgence in people reading middle grade recently i feel like i if I loved that book, I gave it five stars. Like, I want to speak about it. So, it's about a girl named Aubrey. Her father and sister have passed away. And we find out um, on, the early, on the early pages that her mother has abandoned her. And so, at the beginning, she is living in her, own, in her house on her own, going to do the shopping on her own and not telling anyone about her mum abandoning her. But eventually, her grandma comes and collects her and she goes and moves in with her grandma. And it's just... A, a story of like a child learning to deal with grief and understanding really adult concepts of how maybe her mum may be feeling in that moment maybe maybe why her mum did what she did and becoming understanding of that and this book wrecked me like I was a mess I was a mess okay I'm gonna finish it <laughs> I just think this is a great middle grade book and it definitely holds a really special place in my heart. I think it's just beautifully written and Aubrey is a wonderful character. If you can get your hands on it, I would really recommend reading this book. So that's my answer for that. <laughs> okay, we've got this one of, um, of Raven. <laughs> she's laughing is when you something's happened that you can't believe that you just have to laugh that laugh isn't a funny laugh that's a i'm shocked i can't believe what's happened so i'm just gonna laugh so for that i'm gonna go with gemina by jay christoph and amy kaufman now these books are funny the characters in them are very funny very quick wit but the reason i picked gemina which is the second in the series in particular is because i remember the ending to this book i've never i've never really heard anyone speak about it and i'm not going to spoil anything but essentially with the ending, you're thrown a few curveballs and in a very short space of time, you think that a lot of different things are going to be are happening and you kind of don't know what's... Yeah. <laughs> and I remember after I finished it, I'd like cried, I'd been shocked. I just sat there and I just started laughing to myself like that. Well, you're just, you've been through the emotions, you've been through them all and so you're just sitting there and laughing to yourself. <laughs> I, I have to laugh. I'm sorry. This is so ridiculous. I love the Illuminate series by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I've spoken about it like a hundred thousand times. Um, I gave them all five stars. It's definitely a new favorite series of mine. In this series, we follow kind of different characters in each series, but in the first one, it is about a couple who have just broken up and on the day they've broken up, their planet is invaded and they have to uh, evacuate their planet on separate ships. And it is essentially the story of this space war and them trying to survive, them trying to keep their families and loved ones alive and them trying to bring justice on the baddies. I think Gemini is my favourite in the series, the second run, and the ending the ending just it, it had me on such an emotional rope. Do any of you know what I mean? When you've cried, you've you've it, and that's been turned around and then another curveball and you just sit there and you go <laughs> Okay, men, ominous music. <laughs> 
for some reason my first thought was Vicious by V.E. Schwab for that. Um, I loved Vicious by V.E. Schwab and then I read Vengeful which is the second one and I gave it two stars. Vicious was on the way to be one of my favourite books of all time but I feel like Vengeful kind of tainted it which obviously it shouldn't, they're separate books but I feel like I need to reread Vicious on its own and just ignore Vengeful. <laughs> so I can think about it more clearly. But in Vicious, we follow Eli and Victor as they kind of start their quest to become superheroes. They believe in kind of like near-death experiences giving you strange abilities and they test that and they're successful and it's kind of the story of their friendship to enemies. I just think this is an example of, although there is women in this book, they're definitely side characters. And so this is the book that first came to mind of just men like, fucking shit up for just their own meaningless rivalries. Do you know what I mean? I hate men. Like not caring about the rest of the world. <laughs> just being so consumed by this rivalry that you do all this crazy stuff to try and get back at them. I loved Vicious and I would recommend reading it, but maybe treat it as a standalone. And I've heard a few, quite a few other people say that, it's not just me. Vengeful ain't it. Vengeful really ain't it. And it's put me off of reading more V-Shrub stuff in the future, though I still want to. I really liked this one from, uh, what's his name? When is it Bill? Oh yeah, Billy, Billy. Yeah, Billy on the stream. I do have brain cells. It's go clowns. Let's go. Here we go. Let's <laughs> go. We've got clown wigs on. Okay, this kind of makes me think of Renegades by Marissa Mayer. Maya? Mayer? Who knows? Honestly, who knows? And who cares? Listen, they ain't full clowns, but these are just kids. Renegades is about a girl named Nova who has been brought up living with the anarchists. Her uncle was the head anarchist and he died in the big war between the renegades who are the good guys and anarchists who are the bad guys. And she decides to infiltrate the renegades and apply to be a renegade and... To, to, so to learn more and to feed that back to her people but of course she develops friendships feelings and it's kind of like that tug between trying to figure out what to do and what's right and I feel like the group of young renegades that Nova's in kind of have a bit of clown energy to them like they're kind of just running down the street and they don't really know what they're doing do you know what I mean they're making it up as they go along and voila what do we have ladies a fucking clown we are a stupid bitch we are a fucking clown i feel like you could put them in that picture and it would work so yeah i i i think i gave renegades three stars and i gave arch enemies which is the second one four stars i haven't read supernova yet because i want the american cover because i have the american cover of arch enemies god i'm so sad but i yeah i got arch enemies when i was in america and i want the supernova american one but i don't know how i'm ever going to get that so i should just give up on that and get Supernova. Classic GC. This is very expensive hair. It's fucking frazzled. <laughs> because you've only got straighteners in here. You haven't got heat rollers. <laughs> so you better pay, you can pay for me to have a new set of extensions. The fucking the hair, hair is, is frazzled. frazzled. It's a fucking piss take. You're all taking the piss out of me. Why don't you think of putting heated rollers in here? Straighteners, straighteners are what fucking, fucking weirdos, weirdos use on their hair. <laughs> That's what you think. Who's like juicy energy enough to be like straighteners are what fucking weirdos use on their air? Okay, okay, you're about to hate me. You're about to hate me. You're about to hate me. There's only one book that fits this energy of rich white people holding their lives to a certain standard, which is frankly ridiculous. <laughs> and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Don't hate me. I know I speak about it in every video, but do I care? Every day, every day, every day more and more people tell me they're gonna read it and it makes me so happy. <laughs> So this is a murder mystery, very Agatha Christie style. It's a bit campy, like it's just a bit of fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but we find out on the first page that a body has been found at the wedding. And this is all very rich people. This is people from private schools. This is the elite, the elite, who know they're the elite and have certain standards. Maybe for the bride, Jules would be like, straighteners are what fucking weirdos use on their hair but not like that she wouldn't talk like that she'd be like straighteners are what fucking weirdos use on their hair i love the reveals in this every time you think you know what's gonna happen you don't i did not predict who died who was the killer i remember there's like a quote in it where that the author said she overheard someone say at a, like a posh coffee shop because she often goes on writers in coffee shops and she used it in the book and it's like this these women talking one of them goes I just don't know why 
anyone would ever fly with a child in economy. <laughs> So that's the kind of energy we're thinking. We're thinking delusional rich person who only uses heated rollers. Gemma thinks she has seen a ghost. I just seen that really fucking scary in the mirror. Where? Oh my god, open that fucking door now. No, fuck this, I'm out of here. Get that fire exit door. <laughs> Get that oh. fire exit door. In terms of reading stuff with a ghost in it, I read Tunnel, is it Tunnel of Bones? Oh. No, Tunnel of Bones is the second one, isn't it? I read City of Ghosts by uh, V. Schwab, or Victoria Schwab in this case. And I gave it three stars. Didn't really like it. But if you're looking for some ghostly toast, you're looking for... <laughs> If you're looking for a book about ghosts, then that whole book is literally about ghost hunters and a girl who can see ghosts. In terms of get that fire exit door, I'm off. Let's think about that, shall we? Oh, if we're talking about doors, ah, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> As many of you know, almost my favourite book last year, it, it's my second favourite book of last year, uh, was The Starless Sea by Erin Morganson. So this is often touted, like often described as a book with underground libraries and a starless sea and a pirate and it's about Zachary who finds himself in a book. But what often isn't mentioned is the big role that doors play in this. So he has to kind of go through a certain door in, in order to get to the set, the starless sea. And then doors have a certain magical ability in this. I don't want to spoil anything, but you can enter the same room through different doors and come from different time periods, come from different years. Certain doors can take you to one place one time and to another place another time. And so Zachary is saying, get, get that, that fire exit door. door. I'm off, off to the start of the scene. That's not a stretch, that's just genius in action. <laughs> I think it's such a beautiful book. I think it is magical. I haven't felt like that with a book for a long time where the writing just kind of like hits you. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily the plot, although the plot was great, but just the way that it's written feels so magical and so different to anything you ever read before. I love books that try to do something that I've never seen before and never read before. And this definitely was that. I fell in love with it. I want to do a reread. I always say that with so many books, like, oh, I want to reread it. It's never going to happen because I've got a million other books to read. But The Star of Sea. Um, incredible incredible we're gonna end with this one which is the duckling with the pink knife <laughs> and this is another thing i've spoken about in every video but that is me reading heartstopper and if any of you are gonna hurt nick and charlie that's what you fucking get it's me as that duck with that knife going you know jab jab they are just the purest couple to ever live ever lived. Heartstopper is a graphic novel series by Alice Oseman and we follow it's basically boy meets boy and boy and boy fall in love and it's so magical. One day, maybe in a couple months, I don't know, a couple weeks, couple days who knows how long I can wait just sit down for the day and let myself reread the three of them. Even though I only read the other volume three like a couple weeks ago, like I already feel that need and because they're graphic novels like it's only going to take you an hour to read each like it's so fast. I love these. They hold such a like a special place in my heart. They're the first graphic novel I ever read and I don't know if a graphic novel is ever going to top these. There's just something about the facial expressions in these and softness and the hope of their relationship. It's a very joyful, hopeful story even though it's starting to tackle really important issues. I love it. So if you haven't checked out Hot Supper yet, definitely do. Because if you like that picture of that duck, if you like that energy, that's how you're going to be you. You pick up Hot Supper, that is automatically you. Anyone who has read Hot Supper can attest that is you. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Let me know if you would like me to do it again. I would love to match up more memes to books. <laughs> My two favourite loves together in one place. And I will see you very, very soon with another one. Bye.